John Robert Adams, Silence of the Heart, Chapter 12. You have absolutely nothing to give up, nothing to surrender, nothing to let go of. You are already liberated. How can you believe that you have to let go of something that never existed? You believe that you have to let go of your attachments? How can the self have attachment? <laughs> you think you have to surrender all your fears, all your depressions, all of the things that have been bothering you? Surrender to who? Those things are not yours. They do not belong to you. You are pure reality. You are the imperishable self. Never were you born. Never did you prevail. And never will you leave. You are one. The all-pervading one. Consequently, you have absolutely nothing to give up. For you had nothing you had never anything to begin with. It really, it's really egotistical to believe you have got something to give up. There is nothing you have to surrender. It is only the ego that believes that something has to be surrendered. Something has to be given up. And you have to let go of something. Who is the one who who had something to begin with. There is no one. There is only the one reality. And you are that. You are not separate. The one self. You come to sit with me in silence. In the silence is where all the power is. In the silence is where all the answers are. Happiness comes to you all by itself. Joy comes to you. When you sit in the silence, you remember who you are. We come to see that we are all one self. What does this mean? It means we are not separate. We are all one. The one self. We are all the one self. The one self expresses itself through choiceless, effortless, pure awareness. Choiceless, effortless, pure awareness. This is what you are. Pure awareness. Think about this. You are pure awareness. Choiceless, effortless, pure awareness. What do you mean by pure awareness? Pure awareness simply means that you are all pervading consciousness. Your essence is everything. You are aware that the whole universe is a direct product of your thinking, of your mind. It is only aware. You are aware of the trees, of the mountains, the sky, like boundless space, pure awareness. You are aware of reality, the true truth of yourself. Yourself is pure awareness and you are that. Ponder this. The self is pure awareness and you are that. If you only knew what is meant to you, you are totally free, completely free, effortless, choiceless freedom. Everything else is an illusion. Everything else is an illusion. The world, the universe, the personal God. Everything else is an illusion. So where do all these things that look so real come from? Where do all the people come from? Where do all the things come from? that you see all day long. Where does everything come from? From the I thought, 
The I thought produces the small self. That is what makes you think that you are a body and a mind. That it is your condition that you have problems. You have to work through these things. The I thought does all these things to you. It ruins your life completely. It hides reality and produces a world. Therefore, you come back to the self. You have to somehow transcend the I thought. And this is done by forgetting all the knowledge that you have up to now. All the knowledge that you know, everything that you have been taught since childbirth has to be given up. All of your beliefs, all of your dogmas, preconceived ideas, all that has to go. When they are gone, you rest in the self. You will be unconditioned, choiceless awareness. We have something we own, a person, a place, a thing. We cannot get it out of our minds. We are attached. Because of this attachment, we go through many lives. It appears that we go through many experiences simply because we are attached to something. It can be mental or physical. Even if you hate someone, if you hate someone or something with a passion, that is attachment. You will come back to this earth or to another planet similar to this earth again and again and again. And you will meet this person that you hate so much under different circumstances again and again and again. One time he may be your daughter, he may be your mother, he may be your husband, he may be your wife, but that person that you despise so much will meet you again and again and do things to you in order to upset you and you will hate again and again. You will never be free until you understand. The understanding is to turn within, to forget about the person, but to see your own reality, to trace the I thought to the source. After all, it is the I thought that hates and loves, that has attachments to the person, place, or thing. When the I thought is transcended, only the self remains. Then your karma is finished, your body is finished, and your God is finished, and you are home free. But as long as you allow a person, place, or thing, and maybe your own body that you are attached to, your own mind, that is person, place, or thing also, as long as you deeply feel these things, you will never become free until you let it go. Whatever you are no longer attached to gives way. Whatever you hold on to, and as you let go of your opinions toward person, place, or thing, you find that you are growing, you are evolving, you are becoming something that is inevitable, something that cannot be explained, something that is so wonderful. You will never dream that something like this existed, yet it does. You have to reconcile yourself to the universe. You have to reconcile yourself to the whole universe, the mineral kingdom, the vegetable kingdom, the animal kingdom, the human kingdom. When you have become friends with the entire universe, you will not have to do self-inquiry at Mavachara. You will not have to trace the I or worry about the I just reconciliation with the universe will free you. After all, when you love everything unqualified, what else can you do?
There is nothing else. For it is the ego that plays all the other games with you. That makes you love someone special, hate someone special. That makes you despise certain animals and eat them. That makes you think poison ivy is worse than the rose. That causes you to qualify life. A sage sees everything as equal. Nothing is worse or better than any other. And just by hearing this, allowing it to go into your heart, feeling it will lead you to awakening. Think of the problems you think you have. Why are they problems? What difference does it make? There is nothing in the world that is that important for you to want to feel badly where you want to get revenge or you are afraid that something will happen to your body. You are concerned about a loved one. You are worried about the world situation. When you are like that, you are assuming responsibility for these things. After all, you did not ask to really get born. You didn't ask to get born into the family where you were born, into the nationality, into the religion that you were born into, in the city, in the state, in the country that you were born into. The power that takes care of that shows you how to take care of you. Don't you see there isn't anything you have to do to help? In other words, God does not need your help. All you have to do is take a deep breath and say, Take it, God. I am finished with it. I will never worry again. I will never be upset over anything again. Now, where you are now, where are you coming from? What do you see when you wake up in the morning? You worry about your life. It is not going where you want it to go. You think you have to find a teacher someplace far away and the teacher will give you something that you need, a special book that you can read that will enlighten you and make you happy. Give you something that you can do, become peaceful, relaxed, that will last. None of these things ever last for a while, for a few moments, for a few days, a few months, a few years. Then you revert back to what you were before because the mind has never been destroyed. Your job is to destroy the mind that thinks about these things. That is why you are, why you are here to destroy the ego completely. That is the only way you will be free, totally free forever. The only way ponder these wisdoms. I'm speaking to you and see if I'm not right. Every teaching is of the mind. Every teacher that you chase, go after. Every teaching that he gives you or she gives you is of the mind, only the mind. There is no mind. And you will have nothing to look for. The mind wants to search and look. If there is no mind, who is left to look? Who? is left to see. So life goes on and the seeker and the object of the seeker, this is how you are made to see objects and identify with objects. I am saying transcend the seer and the objects. By inquiring to whom does these objects come? Who sees the objects? What is the source? You must ask the question repeatedly all day long. What I, the source of the mystery, misery, what is the source of my happiness? Will your mind try to be judgmental? Catch yourself. Ask, to whom does this come? To whom whom does this judgment come? It comes to me. I think this, but... I am really the I that thinks this. Am I an I? Where did I come from? Who am I? Who is this thinker? And go beyond. 
keep going beyond everything that comes to your mind. Go beyond all the answers until you're left in total peace. When there are no more answers, you are totally free and peaceful. As long as you are looking for answers, you have no peace or happiness. Always remember, this world is not a world to improve. Even if you are trying to make this world a better place in which to live, you can't do this. It will always be for a few days, a few months, a few years. This world is not a world to be improved at all. It is a world to be gotten rid of. It is the mind. It begins in the mind. Don't think someday the world will be a better place in which to live. You will be happy. It will never happen since the beginning of time. Man has tried to improve this world to no avail. Things sometimes seem to improve for a while, but it will become worse than it is before, than it was before. Why? Because this is the way of the world. You have friction in this world. It has to have friction to survive. If there is no friction in the world, this world would disintegrate totally. We would have no world. It is good, bad, right, wrong, up, down, forward, backward. In order for a jet plane to fly, there has to be the same amount of pushing back against it, the resistance. This is how a plane flies. It has resistance. If there was no resistance, it would not fly. It would not be able to get off the ground. So it is with our life. In order to achieve something, there has to be resistance. Think about it. All you wish to achieve in life, you have to have resistance in order to achieve it. If there was not resistance, there would be nothing to achieve. It is more beautiful than you can ever understand. This is why I say to you, Advaita Vedanta has nothing to do with this world whatsoever. You try to make yourself a better human being or a more complete person. This makes you more worldly. You have to get off of this planet totally and completely. And when you get off this planet, you have to fly away someplace like Mars, where you go deep within and touch reality. It's what's comprehensible, what happens when you touch that reality. It's more beautiful than you can ever imagine, understand or appreciate. So stop searching, stop looking, stop being what you are, what you think you are. Stop doing everything mentally. I know you're concerned. What is going to happen if you stop thinking? You, you will always be taken care of. You will get all the things you need. Again, think, what is the worst thing that can possibly happen to you? You can die. There is no such thing as death. You all know this. You can lose a fortune. You came into this world without a fortune. And you're going out without a fortune. Have no concern about these things. Karmically, you have, and you are going through an experience and what you have gone through, but that is your body. That is not you. Do you not see by now that you are totally free? Your real nature is absolute goodness, parabrahman, absolute reality. You are the self, the all-pervading self. What can you possibly fear? What can anyone possibly do to you? You are free. You are whole. You are complete. And there is only one of you. There never was a you and me. There is only one. And that one is absolute reality. You are that one. You are the body of bliss. Wake up. Get rid of those feelings that are beseeching you to do all these stupid things. 
awaken, be free, simplify your life. Have no fear. Fear is another thing that you become attached to and it keeps you back. Never believe that you have something important to think about. All things are not important. No matter what you may think about, it is not important. Yet you say to yourself, how can I function without thinking? Think of what you said. How can I function without thinking? Not you, but I. What you are really saying is, how can the I function without thinking? What I are you referring to? The ego has to think to exist, but the I am consciousness is self-existent. There is nothing to think about. So whenever you are thinking about something, realize it is the I consciousness. The I ego, so to speak, that does the thinking. If you go beyond the I ego and go back to the I consciousness, your thoughts will stop. There will be no thoughts. For again, what is reality? To think about. Reality is reality. It is all pervading omnipresence. There is no room or space for it to think. It is a power which knows itself. The power that knows itself is consciousness. The absolute reality. It can only know itself and nothing else. Because nothing else exists apart from the self. There is no duality in the absolute reality. Duality only appears to exist at the human level. It's an appearance. It's not true. It's not real. You can't say this to yourself. Look at the world. The world is a cosmic joke. It appears to be real. The good things, the beautiful things, the horrible things, they are all imposters. The world is a world of duality. For every good, there is a bad. It has a balance. For every bad, there is has to be a good. For every up, there is a down. For every forward, there is a backwards. We can never understand this world. It is too complex. So get out of it. Not by committing suicide, but by transcending the mind and the body and awaken to your real self. That is how you get out of it. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop paying so much attention to your thoughts, to the world, to your body. Let come what will come. Surrender totally to yourself. Yourself is God consciousness. Begin to identify with the I am, not with conditions. Leave conditions alone. As I told you before, you are not responsible for anything. Get rid of your guilty feelings. Mentally, you have to feel in your heart the oneness of eternity. And until we mature, and this comes first in our lives, we will only go so far on the spiritual path. Where your heart is, that is where God is. Today, think, what is this thing I am attached to? What is so meaningful for me in this world? And realize it is that which is keeping you back. Let go of it mentally by turning within and realizing that I feel this. I feel I need this. Where does this I come from? Follow the I thread to the source and become liberated. Source. Then all of your troubles, your problems, your life, your world come dissolved into this source. Until that happens, realize that you are not the I that has these problems. That is the point. It is the I that seems and feels depressed or worried or hurried or upset or fearful. It is depressed. I feels depressed all the time. Yet it is not you. You are not a personal I, even though you are following the I. You are following a mirage, an optical illusion. For you are not that I. You are absolute reality, nirvana, 
Sat Chidananda, you are not the I. If you are not the I, then who has these problems? Who has the sickness? Who has these doubts? Who has these suspicions? Who has all these worldly problems that most people, most being human beings have? I do, but I am not the I. Yet I has the problem. Do you see what I mean? I has the problem, not me, but I. In this case, me is absolute reality, pure awareness, consciousness. Therefore, this is the best psychotherapy that has ever been invented. For you can step back and watch the I that has all these problems. You can understand and realize intellectually that the real me, the real self, can never have a problem. It is impossible. Yet I feel the problem. You immediately catch yourself and realize, yes, yes, the I feels the problem. You see, not me, but the I feels the problem. When you forget for a while and you say, I feel depressed, and you catch yourself and you laugh, you say, mm, I'm sure the I does feel depressed. The I feels out of sorts. Not me, but this I. Then after a little while, you forget again, and you say, oh, I feel sick now. Yeah, the eye does feel sick. Then you remember and say, I feel sick, not me, but this eye. You do this all day long. Finally, what will happen is that you will separate yourself from this eye. You will no longer look at your body as I. You will no longer look at your mind as I. When you realize that I is everything in the universe, I must also be the body and the mind. You then realize that you are not the body and you are not the mind, but the I is the, <laughs> I is the body and I is the mind. I is all the problems. You separate yourself. You watch. You observe the I having all these problems, and pretty soon you're having a good laugh at yourself. You'll find and feel freedom. If you practice this, I can assure you that you will feel a freedom that you never felt before. You will feel omnipotent, omnipresent. You will feel an indwelling bliss. You will come to see that the body does not exist as a body. You will look at yourself and see the body, but you will laugh. You will know it is not your body. There is no body. In reality, you are eternal. That is like the water in the mirage. There is no water. It only appears so. That is the way the body is. You appear to have a body, but you don't really. I has the body, and I does not really exist. Do you see the... Revelation now, there is no I that is in no body. Then what gets old and what dies? What gets sick? What becomes depressed? The answer is nothing. There is no one to get depressed and there is no one to die. There was no one to have mental anguish. There is no one left to do anything. You are home free. You will appear full of responsibility get married, go to the movies, and yet you are the self. When you feel this way, there's nowhere to go because nowhere to go, you are the self. Nothing makes you happier than any other thing. It is the same. You no longer de-inferate de de <laughs> between objects. Only the objects become like a piece of clay that you have taken to make objects out of. But you realize it is all comes from the same piece of clay. That is how it is with your life. There is no one doing anything. There is absolutely nothing to do. When I say there is absolutely nothing to do, I do not necessarily mean you're going to sit still and sit in your chair all day long. This appears paradoxical. Your body will appear to be doing this. And yet you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt there is no one doing anything. Think about that. This is a very important point. 
you will appear to go to the movies, you will have a job and you'll go to work and you'll come home and you'll get married and you'll get divorced and you'll go swimming and you'll do whatever you do. Yet you will know no one is doing anything. How can that be? How can you appear to be doing nothing? Yet nothing is being done. The sky appears blue and yet upon investigation, there is no sky, no blue. So you appear to be doing something, but there is no doer. There is really no one who needs to do anything or does anything. Space and time have been eliminated. You are in an entirely different dimension where you appear as if you are moving, working, experiencing, and there is nothing being done. I admit that this state is difficult to think of, yet it is the truth. No one has ever done anything. There is only one and that one is all, pervading and omnipresent. Where is there room to do anything? Think of it this way. Look at it this way. If you were the only one in the universe, and you were the size of the universe, and all the planets and all the stars and the earth and the people and the places and the things would be within you, you would have no space to do anything. Yet everything is being done within yourself. It's the same thing. This is really the truth about you. You are the microcosm and the macrocosm. When you are working in duality and ignorance, you appear to be a small human being. And you look around, you see millions of other beings just like you. And you argue with them and you fight with them and you love them. And you do all kinds of activities with fellow human beings. But as you work on yourself, as you begin to rise in consciousness, something tells you that there is only one. There is not you and I. There is only the I, and the I does not exist. Therefore, there is no thing that can comprehend that existence. There is no such thing as existence. There is no God that creates the universe. There is no being that causes anything to happen. The highest truth is nothing is happening. So you say, that might be true, Robert, but I am suffering. I have mental anguish. I appear to be ill. I have difficulty with people. Why? Simply because of wrong identification. You're identifying with apparent existence. As long as you identify with existence, you're going to appear to exist. And if you exist, you are going to have problems. For every human being that is born has a problem. Therefore, somehow you have to get rid of the notion that you are born. You have to get rid of the notion that you exist. And you have to get rid of the notion that you have got a problem. In other words, you have to wake up. You have to wake up in your reality not birth, not death, not problem. Nobody dies because nobody was born. I can go on and on like this, but if you are not experiencing what I'm talking about, how can you believe me? I know some of you had a glimpse of this reality, so you know it is so, but most of us have not. How can we accept this? You have to experience it within yourself. It is the only way you can ever wake up. Do not experiment with this world. How do you experiment in the world? When you believe that those trees are beautiful. Sunset, sunrise, beautiful flowers, beautiful people, as good as it may seem or sound. This is what keeps you back from awakening. Why? Because you are identifying with the external cause that does not exist. You do not realize that the beautiful trees come from your mind. The beautiful sunset is in your mind. All the beauty and all the ugliness that you perceive is all within yourself. You are the self. So the person who wants to awaken, when they look at beauty, they realize they are projecting it. They are both imposters two sides of the same coin, and they start to inquire, to whom has this come? Think about that. When you behold all the beauty outside the window, 
instead of being in awe, admiring it, ask who sees this? In other words, the beauty that you see out there really comes from in here. When you are in a deep sleep at night, who sees? There are no trees, there are no flowers. You are in deep sleep and yet you are awake. Deep sleep is the closest thing to self-realization there is. Do you ever wonder why when you come out of deep sleep you say, I feel good? There is no one to come out of deep sleep that feels bad. You may have a bad dream, but I mean when you are really in deep sleep and you wake up, if you catch yourself, you will see you feel good. You feel great. You feel wonderful. It is only when you start to think that the change comes. Check it out yourself. Why? Because deep sleep is really bliss. Yet it is unconscious bliss. Liberation is conscious bliss. Liberation is when you are awake and you are conscious. You are not conscious of anything in particular. You are just conscious. That is liberation. So when you see anything external from yourself and you get involved in it, catch yourself. Realize it is coming out of you the, and question to whom does this come? You are that. I know there are many of you who like to go hiking, like to climb mountains, like to become part of nature. That is okay. But do not believe that these things are external from you. These things are yourself. You are that. When you question to whom does this come, you again realize it comes to me. I perceive it then you remember that you are not I, the I that perceives it. Yet in reality, you are not the perceiver. Perceive, perceiver. You are not the witness. I perceives it. I is the witness. This is the very, this is a very important point. And I want you to understand it because it can change your whole life. Whatever you see in the world, you are to realize that I perceives. But do not look at it, I as being the self. You have to catch yourself and say, I perceives this. Separate yourself from this I. All is what? Consciousness. It is only when you believe that you are I that your humanhood comes into play. But as soon as you perceive that I is the universe, you have separated yourself from the I, and the consciousness comes into play, and you have awakened. In other words, when you can separate from the I, you will be awakened and liberated. Play this game every day. Whenever you see, whether it is your body or your mind or other people, when someone does something to you that you don't like, the worst thing you can do is react. Can you see why now? Because when you react, you are affirming your humanhood and your ego becomes stronger. But when you no longer react, your ego becomes weaker and weaker. And I and the ego are the same. Whenever you think, I know most of you believe when you see bad things of life, Man's inhumanity to man, all the dastardly things on TV, you want to separate yourself from that. But it is good things also. You are not the good things and you are not the bad things. You are no thing. You are not trying to exchange good for bad. Play the game with yourself. Whenever you think of a beautiful sunset, catch yourself, ask yourself, to whom does this come? It has come to me. I perceive it. Before you ask, who am I? Remember to realize that you are not the I. The I that perceives is not you. In other words, what you must do from now on, when you refer to the I, you are not talking about yourself. Can you remember that? Whenever you use the word I, you want to catch yourself and say, I is not me. Me is who am I? 
Me is the question. From what source does the I come? But the I has absolutely nothing to do with you. If it has something to do with you, that means that you do not have to struggle to give it up. If the I really belongs to you, you would have to fight. You would have a fight on your hands. For you would be looking for all the ways to remove the I. But when you remember that the I does not belong to you, there is nothing to fight. You simply realize that you are not I. Then who am I? If you practice this in the way that I have outlined, then you say, who am I? You will have complete a completely new revelation. You do not say, who am I, until the very end, until you come to a realization that the I is not me. Therefore, everything that is attached to the I is not me. My problems, my house, my family, my birth are all attached to this I. And since the I does not exist, nothing exists. If nothing exists, then who am I? Remember, never say nothing exists and i am consciousness because you don't know what you're talking about it is just words never say the i does not exist but i am sat chit ananda those are just words to you you have to inquire not make a statement do not make a statement this is not a metaphysical class where you can make affirmations and affirmations affirmations are kindergarten that is just to improve your humanhood what you are trying to do is get rid of your humanhood not improve it everything is a question i am not i i am not the body i am not anything that is attached to the i then who am i if you have gotten this far then you will say who am i you will be in deep silence and you have come a long way. So let me recapulate. Starting tomorrow morning, when you get up, whatever you say or feel or see yourself, that is not me. Whatever you feel, whether you feel wonderful or you feel depressed, makes no difference. Say to yourself, that is not me. Whatever you hear, whatever you feel, Whatever you touch, whatever you smell, say to yourself, that is not me. But then admit, I smell it, I taste it, I touch it, I feel it, but that is not me. It is the I that is going through the experience of senses, feeling, touching, tasting, smelling. But I am not the I. Then who am I? What I want you to do now is close your eyes and practice this on yourself. Go through the whole thing. Look out the window and look at the trees, how beautiful they are. And realize that the trees are not coming from nothing. They come from this eye. So the be beauty of the trees is the eye. I have nothing to do with it, but I does. So who am I? Practice this on yourself. See the beautiful thing about all this? You are already enlightened. You are already self-realized, but you refuse to believe it. See how you refuse to believe it? By completely believing everything else, by feeling the world, by allowing all conditions to annoy you, to bother you, to react to them, this hides your reality as, it, as if you were hypnotized. And you believe that there is a world with others. Believing there is a world that you have to overcome. Conditions you have to transcend. And you have a battle on your hands. The truth is you have nothing to transcend. Nothing to overcome. Silence is your reality. Stop thinking. Be silent. Be quiet. Allow the mind to become quiescent. Never mind what is going on. What is going on is always going on. And you will be going on and keep going on even when you're gone. Do not concern yourself with this world or get caught up in it. And it will be like the world has come and will go. Sitting back from the world, you remember who you really are, what you really are. You are absolutely nothing 
to do with this world. I know it sounds strange when I say this, but you have absolutely no thing to do with this world, nothing. This world does not belong to you at all, for you are not here at all. There are no mistakes. Where are you? You are nowhere, yet you are everywhere. Why ponder these things? Why think about these things? Just be yourself. Refuse to acknowledge the world and worldly things. Know yourself as pure awareness, effortless, choiceless, pure awareness. Know yourself this way. When you first awaken in the morning and get out of bed, say to yourself, I am choiceless, effortless, pure awareness, and keep still. You'll be surprised how good you feel. I am effortless, choiceless, pure awareness. Yet you think you are somebody else. You think you are a male or a female or you have a name or you have a profession or a program and you refer yourself to these things. But I tell you, you are not these things at all. Drop these things. Get rid of your pride, your ego. So you believe that you have to make things happen. You have to get ahead of people. What has to happen has already happened. It is so easy to become peaceful. It's so easy to become loving, blissful, happy. You just have to reject all those thoughts that come to you as thoughts. All those feelings, all those emotion, emotions, just reject them. You reject them by not giving them power. You give them power every time you let them feel something inside you. When your thoughts take on a feeling nature, you give them power. But when you refuse to take on that feeling nature, the thoughts disappear. In other words, you are the one that gives them power. You are the one that creates your condition, be it good or bad. You're the one that sees the world the way you see it. See only yourself. See only reality. See only emptiness. It is really very simple to do. Just sit the way you are sitting now and observe. Do not analyze. Do not try to change your thoughts. Do not fight your thoughts. Just observe them. Watch them. Look at them. And when you are ready, you can ask the question, to whom does these thoughts come? Otherwise, just sit and look at your thoughts. Let your mind do whatever it likes. Let it become as nasty as it wants. Let the mind tell you all kinds of things, scary things, happy things, wrong things, right things. The mind is only here to make trouble for you. That's all. But when you do not allow the mind to make trouble for you, it will disappear. And how do you do this? By not reacting to your thoughts, by not allowing them to feel anything. Where do these thoughts come from? Nowhere. They're called false imagination. All thoughts are false imagination. False imagination is like the water in the mirage. That is where your thoughts are. They appear to come to you, but they don't exist. If they were real, you could grab, you'd be able to grab them and hold on to them, save them, and put them in a box and store them away. But you cannot do this which proves that they have no substance. How can they frighten you? Always remember the idea is to stop thinking completely. Nothing functions mentally at all. Yet some of you still believe that if you stop functioning mentally, you'll become a vegetable. You will not be able to function, but that is not true. What you were will not function, but what you are, you will become, will function just well, very well. You will always appear to function, yet there is no functioner. You are not what you seem to be, no matter how many times I tell you this, you are still thinking, 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 judging, 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 coming to con conclusions, trying to work it out. You have to let go so completely that you will feel no body, no mind, no pain, nothing. That is the only time you will make progress. Do not think about this. The thoughts cannot help you. There are no thoughts that can help you realize the self. 
It is only a total, complete letting go, a giving up. What do you give up? You give up the ego, the mind, your opinions about things. That is all you give up. But yet a tree seems to appear. It turns into a beautiful tree as it grows. So you will appear. Yet you will know that you are not the appearance. You will know that you are totally free and you are omnipotent, omnipresent, all pervading. The whole universe is taking place inside of yourself. And if you are no self, there is no universe. You are beyond no self where there is no, no self. You're beyond the no, no self where there are no words to describe it. Yet it is so beautiful, so blissful, so joyous that if you have had a taste of it, you would never return. You would never want to go back to humanhood. This is why there have been so many who have been touched slightly by this realization. They have been touched by truth and they can remember that this is something there, even though they are back in their human self. So it appears. They never forget that touch. And these people are the ones who strive for to go all the way to realization. What does it mean to go all the way? It means to look at your life as a picture show. All the appearances are images on the screen. I means not to regulate your life at all in any way, but to observe it and watch it. To observe the fears, the ignorance, the arrogance, and not to do anything about them, but to look at them and look through them and become free. Only by looking through them can you become free of them. Think of an emotion that you have that bothers you. Perhaps you have a bad temper, a fearful disposition, whatever. First, you have to see it. Then you dive deep, deep, deep within it, and it will totally and completely disappear. It will never bother you again. When you try to change things, they all appear fine for a while. Then you will find yourself in the same position you were before. Different people, different places. You don't want to change anything. You want to be still and look. As you become still and look, you are looking at what you are looking at will look back at you. As you look at the world without interpretation, as you look at the world without attachment, what the world is will be revealed to you. The world will be revealed to you as nothing, as an image on a screen, the screen of consciousness. You will become radiantly happy for no reason whatsoever. You will find the peace that you never dreamed existed. You have to want this. You have to love this. You have to want this more than anything else in the world. When I say more than anything else in the world, I don't mean it in I don't have it. Since I want it, I mean to feel and believe and to know that you are that. Think there are no thoughts. All these thoughts are a mirage. And you want that to be uncovered for you by going deeper all the time. By letting go of all the things that seem to be happening in life. Continuing, continuing to dive deeply within the self. You dive deeply within the self to the extent that you give up the stuff that you have been carrying around for years. There is no one who cannot awaken. Since your real self is already awake, that is nothing that can keep you back but yourself. By the self, I mean your mind, your thoughts. Your thoughts are the only thing that keeps you back. You have to look at these thoughts and not, not allow them to, to allow them to sow anything to you. Do not allow them to frighten you. Do not have you do not have to remember to practice self inquiry. To inquire to whom does these thoughts come? 
to always think in your mind, there are no thoughts. All these thoughts are a mirage. So you come to sit with me in silence, to be still, to know that you are effortless, choiceless, pure awareness. Know this deep in your heart. As soon as thoughts come to you, ignore them. Let the thoughts come, let the thoughts go. Pay absolutely no attention to the thoughts and they will disappear of their own volition. But you try to change them and the power of them will become so much stronger. Remember, don't try to exchange good thoughts with bad thoughts or bad thoughts with good thoughts. Whenever the thoughts come to you, just ignore them. Sometime in the morning, just scream it out at the top of your voice. I am effortless, choiceless, pure awareness. That will send the message home who you really are and go through the day like this. Be still. If you can only be still long enough, you will feel this unalloyed happiness within you arising and you will just become happy for no reason whatsoever. But it only comes when you are still, when you are quiet, when you are peaceful. Do not be two different people. One who comes here to satsang and are quiet, and one who argues in the world all day long with people and finds everything wrong in the world and gets angry and gets mad and gets upset, be one person, all pervading consciousness, be that. Never allow yourself to believe that something is wrong in your life. Catch it before it starts and say to yourself, I am effortless, choiceless, pure awareness. Whatever comes up, say that. Know the truth about yourself. God has no problems. Neither do you, for you are that. I know that this teaching sounds absurd to some people, and yet this teaching has been propagated by rishis, sages since the beginning of time. This is it. This is your opportunity to awaken. Why not use it? Do not let another moment go by where you are believing and thinking something is wrong somewhere. Everything that is happening in this world today has happened before. Different times, different people, different places. All of these things have happened before previously. There have always, they have always happened in this world. This is the nature of the world. There are so many people who want a beautiful world in which to live where there is everlasting peace and tranquility, where there is joy and abundance, where these things are, but these things are temporary. This is not the way the world is. It is interesting when you stop thinking of joy when you stop thinking of sadness, when you stop thinking of good things and bad things, again, something wonderful happens to you, for you are no longer attached to anything. Yet in this non-attachment, you will feel love and kindness and beauty and joy in a totally different way. Why not awaken now? Will you... Will you... Wake up, do me a favor, stop playing these games. Have mercy on yourself. Stop those thoughts that make you angry or make you upset. Forget the past. If you are not the mind, not the body, how can you have a past? Never mind the body, the individual. You don't have to worry about the past. For there was never a beginning, there was never an end. You were never born, you will never die. You do not prevail. Don't try to analyze what I'm saying or figure it out, just be it. When you say to yourself, I am effortless, choiceless, pure awareness, this transcends, transcends the past, transcends the future, it transcends everything and awakens you to the self which you are. Awaken to the self right now. Awaken to I. Awaken to it right now. To your true self. 
Be still, silly mind, let the true sun shine forth. You see, you live in a universe which is self-existent, self-abiding, self-sufficient. This means that all your needs are met from within. Trust in the power that knows the way. But this will only happen when you accept it this way. If you think that your needs have to come from a person, place, or thing, you will always have a fight on your hands because you are hoping to get a better job or get some money in the bank or that someone will come along to help you with your problems. These are all erroneous thoughts. If you could only learn to rely on the self, miracles would take place in your life. If you can only learn to rely on the self, how do you learn to rely on the self? By trusting life, trusting life just the way that it is. I'm not saying to trust certain people or to trust certain conditions or certain situations. I am saying just trust life. To trust life, you go beyond people, places, and things. In other words, you feel and you believe in your heart that there is a power that knows the way. You came out of it. So you are that also. For you are it. You are that power yourself. And you feel good about it. This is what I mean when I say there is nothing to fix in your life. Nothing to change. Nothing to accomplish. Nothing to do except to abide in the power that knows the way. It is so simple, yet it is so hard for some of us. And it is hard because we allow the thoughts to come to us to spoil everything. You have to control your thoughts to control your thinking. When you are free from thinking, you will always abide in consciousness, which is the power that knows the way. And soon you will find yourself becoming happier and happier every day. Peaceful, harmonious. What can really disturb you and make you sad, make you afraid? Only something that you think may happen to you. But if you are living in the eternal now, if you exist in this moment and you do, in this moment, there are no problems. There is no problem in this moment. It is only when you begin to think of tomorrow or next week that you think of problems. But if you learn to stay centered in the moment where nothing is happening, this moment will become the next moment. And the no next moment will become the next hour, the next day, the next week, and the next year. This is how to live from moment to moment. But what do we do? We stretch out these moments into days. We like to see the future. We think something's going to happen to us tomorrow or the next day or the next day. But nothing can ever happen to you unless you allow it. You allow it by believing in it, by thinking about it. You give it power by fearing it. But I say to you in truth, there is nothing to fear in this whole universe. There is no fear. Fear does not exist. Only the self exists. Only the self exists. Catch the meaning of those words. Only the self exists. Catch the meaning of those words. Only the self exists. And I am that. That is a profound statement. All is well, all is well, all is perfectly well. Never forget that. Do not think about it. Do not try to analyze it. Just accept it in your heart. All is well, period, the end. Most of us are here because we want to become self-realized. We want to experience moksha, liberation, awakening. There are these three points that you should remember. If you remember these three points, you will be already awakened. 
you have to remember these three points in your heart by assimilating these three points, by digesting them, by becoming a living embodiment of these three points, you will become consciousness, pure awareness, which you already are. The first point, whatever appears to happen to your body or your mind, whether you have cancer or AIDS or your mind feels happy or reassured, whatever befalls your body or your mind, remember, that is not you. You have absolutely nothing to do with that. It makes no difference what is going on in your life. You can be mat maturely re relative to the happiest person on earth, or you can be miserable, or you can be sick. It has nothing to do with you. This is your body and your mind, not you. You are Brahman. You are Nirvana. You are absolute reality. What is going on with your body and your mind has absolutely nothing to do with you. This is the first point. The second point that you must always remember is that all of your karmas, your samskaras, your sins, your omissions, your commissions, the sinful acts that you're responsible for, none of these things can touch you. If you center yourself in the here and now, in other words, the here and now is omnipresent. The here and now is all pervading, omniscient. The here and now is consciousness. The here and now is boundless space, effortless, choiceless, pure awareness. When you hold on to the here and now, when you identify with the here and now, when you identify with here and now, the past is no longer valid. There is no past. There is no future in the here and now. There is I am. There is ultimate reality, ultimate oneness, and you are that. When you are living in the here and now, your karmas do not exist. Your samskaras stop dead in their tracks. Your sins are abated. You are born again. You become a new man, a new woman. You are free. The third point that you must always remember is you have absolutely nothing to give up, nothing to surrender, nothing to let go of. You are already liberated. How can you believe that you have to let go of something that never existed? You believe that you have to let go of your attachments? How can the self have attachments? You think you have to surrender to all, all your fears and your depressions and all the things that are bothering you? Surrender to whom? Those things are not yours. They do not belong to you. You are pure reality. You are the imperishable self. Never were you born, never did you prevail, and never will you leave. You are the one, the all-pervading one. Consequently, you have nothing, absolutely nothing to give up, for you have never had anything to begin with. It's really egotistical to believe that you have something to give up. There is nothing you have to surrender it's only the ego that believes that something has to be surrendered to be given up. You have to let go of something. Who is the one that has something to begin with? There's no one. There is only the one reality and you are that. If you can remember these three points by assimilating them, by digesting them, by becoming them, by becoming a living embodiment of them, that is all you have to do. If you remember these three points, you do not have to practice any technique, techniques or sadhana. You do not have to do mantras or meditations of any kind, for you already are awakened. It is the ego that does these techniques and sadhanas are you the ego? Who are you? What are you? Where did you come from? What are you doing here? Where, where are you going? The answers to all of these is this. I am. I am. I am not this. 
I am not that. I am. I am that which has always been. I am that which will always be. I am that I am. You are absolute reality. You're not the person that you identify with. The person who goes to sleep and wakes up, goes through experiences, worries, things, fret, sometimes happy, sometimes sad. That is not you. No longer think of yourself as that person. When you get up in the morning, take a deep breath and realize the truth about yourself. First thing upon awakening, you can say to yourself, I am Brahman. I am the imperishable self. Bullets cannot kill me. Fire cannot burn me. Water cannot drown me. I am that. And rejoice in your true self. Feel, feel the happiness in your heart. Feel your reality in the stillness and the quietness. When there is no mind, no thoughts, no words, who are you then? You just are. If I say anything, it'll be redundant. There are so many words, so many stories, so many teachings, yet if you, are, if you only remember these three points that I shared with you, that will suffice. Why talk about, why talk further than this? The more words you hear, the more confused you become. Actually, the first hour that you sat in silence was the best time for you. There are certain words, very few words, that you have to hear. And then there is silence that you should always be in. It is interesting that the words that I speak to you are really silence. Those are the words of silence, truth, infin infinity, infinity, reality, consciousness, bliss, pure awareness, ultimate oneness. All this is the self, and you are that.